Okay, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to make this image. We're gonna cover modeling from texturing and using materials to lighting the scene. We'll use a few interesting uh, modifiers such as arrays and bubbles. So let's dive into it. Okay, so this is the final file. Uh, it's quite simple. The setup is really simple. You can see there's three area lights here, one camera, a cube that I modeled, and then a geometry nodes. I use something um, called geometry nodes. I'm not gonna use that because I think that's a paid add-on. It's basically trying to replicate C4D cloner. And so instead I'll show you how to use array. As for the material, it's quite simple. Uh, you can tell that it is not something super complicated. It is a mix of subsurface and transparent um, material. And so we'll go over how to create that. Okay, so this is a new Blender file. I'm using my startup setup. Uh, I'll share with you the file if you're interested in. I always default to real-time material. Definitely recommend it's from Ducky 3D. It is absolutely really great. The first thing I'm gonna model is the cube, the base cube before starting to replicate it. Okay, so let's start modeling. You're gonna see me use a, a lot of the shortcuts. Shortcuts are the best. I try to remember as much shortcuts as possible because this is, will make your workflow much faster. So one of the main uh, shortcut to remember is Shift A to add something to the scene. And so I'm gonna go over to Mesh and Cube because that's gonna be the base of our model. I'm also gonna use Alt a lot. Alt will look to like a certain planes, which is great for moving things and modeling. So now I'm gonna resize my cube. Shortcuts for that is S and I'm gonna use Z for the Z axis. So it's gonna resize on the Z axis. 0.2, so it will scale on Z for 0.2. I think that's pretty good. We can change things a little bit later on, um, but I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna press tab to enter the edit mode. I'm gonna press three to uh, have the select mode of lines selected. I'm gonna select all of those edges and I'm gonna bevel those and I'm gonna use control B. I'm gonna move my mouse to the right and I'm gonna scroll my scroll wheel up to add more segments. Usually I try to optimize and not create too much uh, geometry when it's not needed. But for this scene, I know it's not gonna be quite complex. So I can go a little bit crazy and I like to have uh, even. So I'm gonna go with 32. So now I have my base shape. I'm gonna click on the object. I'm gonna do a right click and do shade smooth. The issue with that is it's not gonna work really well. So to fix this, I'm gonna go into my object data properties here. I'm gonna click on normals and click auto smooth and everything is back and really nice. Another thing I wanna do is add a bevel. Um, right now in the render mode, I have cavity on to make it a little bit more understandable visually. But if you remove that, you can tell there's no bevel here. One easy concept to remember and always had in mind is bevel make things more real life and more interesting visually, especially on very simple scenes. It's gonna have more geometry to reflect things on and it's gonna create uh, some interesting reflection. Cool, to do that, there's multiple ways, but I'm gonna use a bevel modifier so at least we can start looking at modifiers a little bit. What this is gonna do is it's gonna uh, bevel the cube. There's some issue here and that's basically because of the scale. One interesting thing about Blender, interesting quote unquote, is it uh, has a different relationship between scale and dimensions. For modifiers and a lot of the things, it's going to look at the scale. And right now you can tell here the scale is not even. So in order to make that somewhat even, I'm going to press Ctrl A and apply scale. And right now you saw that bevel now behave the way we want it to behave. Cool, if you look at the geometry, it's exactly what it says. There's one segment. Um, as for the first bevel, I'm gonna add more geo because I want that to be more smooth and more interesting. So I can go with height here. I think that's a little bit too big, so I'm gonna reduce that. I can do, go with the mouse or obviously I can just you know type a number in. I'm gonna go with 0.01. We're gonna use another modifier called array. 
Hooray is gonna clone your object in, in different ways. From the get-go, you can tell there's not a ton of options here we have to work with. So you can move on the X, Y, and Z. Uh, but we're gonna only be interested to move that in the z-axis for us. One of the best way to do that or had more control is use object offset and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So shift A and I'm gonna, I'm gonna create an empty. An empty is just a object that is empty and has no mesh or vertices associated to it. So I'm gonna go back to my modifier and I'm gonna reference that object with uh, this or I can select from the list. Nothing is happening and that's normal. So let's add a little bit more count here to have a better visibility on what's exactly happening. I like to have even number. So let's go with eight. If I start moving my empty left and right, you can see that how it affects uh, incrementally each and every other object. If I start rotating my empty by a little bit, you can tell every other objects are now moving along in the same way. We can change those numbers later on. We just need a starting point. So let's go with that. Another thing is here, I think there's too much space. So let's go back to our cube and we can move that. We can control that with this parameter here. Cool, I think 1.2 looks good. Let's go back to the empty. So we have pretty much everything set up. We just need to have a different scale as it gets uh, higher in the number count. So right now everything is super even and let's use our empty to do that. Parameters we can use is the scale. And since we're going to scale on the height, which is the Z, we can start reducing that a little bit. Cool. That looks pretty cool. But now there's something here that I'm not really happy with, which is the space between all of those elements. So as I mentioned, there's a few ways to do that. Here we use the relative offset, which is fine, but we can also use the empty to control that. I'm selecting my empty and I'm going to move my empty a little bit higher up until I get to a place where I'm pretty happy with. Uh, I'm going to add a plane so I have this be seated on something. I just want to have a plane to have some nice shadows, control the uh, colors, background, etc, etc. Choosing my plane, size, S, I mean resize with S. I'm going to go up to 10. I'm going to dive into my camera. If you don't have a camera, let's assume you don't have a camera, you can control shift A, camera. I'm going to go into my camera parameter. 50 is nice, I like 85, um, I also like 120 and you know, more um, for, uh, telephoto lens. I think the look is a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna be in my camera view and I'm gonna go to view and camera to view. So that happens a lot, you kinda lost and you're like scrolling up and down and you have no idea what's going on. One easy way to refocus is click on the cube, uh, click on the view and frame selected or numpad dot but i don't have a numpad so i'm gonna go here and do that cool now my thing is framed and i'm gonna try to find an angle that i really like and maybe i think you know 85 is not good enough so i'm gonna want a more telephoto lens maybe or i can even go crazier with like a, a bigger bigger lens let's move into the viewport shading by default, everything is black. I'm gonna click off camera to view and I'm gonna make my workspace a little more easy to work with. So it's pretty much the same principle. Shift A, light, area light. I like my area light to be uh, a disc or ellipse. Moving my camera around using Alt to make sure it's, it locks in. Adding more power to my camera, to my uh, light top down light is not the best so I'm going to start playing with a simple setup such as three point lights. I'm going to add a key light. I don't like my key light to be facing the camera so I'm going to add that to an angle so it creates some interesting shadows. Turn that up, make sure it's in focus. I'm going to duplicate that, shift D, move with G, rotate with R so that's going to be my fill light. Cool, that's fine for now. I'll tweak a little bit uh, in a second as soon as I have more colors within the setup. 
I'm going to create a new material and I'm going to that I'm going to go that floor and now I'm going to work on the main material of the cube I'm going to click on the cube same thing new material I'm going to call that cube and there's basically um, two or three parameters we're going to play with here it's going to be the subsurface scattering the transmission and the base color so what is the subsurface color subsurface is how much light goes through a material the best way to describe it and at least that's how i explain that to people is if you put a flashlight next behind your hand and if you turn the flashlight on you will see some light go through and the light going out is going to be a little bit red because what's inside the end this is the same principle so there's three inputs here and those stands for re um, red green and blue so if i crank that up you will see um, that this is happening so that's subsurface now transmission is how much glassy the how much transparent the material will be turn down the roughness or if i turn out completely you will see material isn't rough and it's pure glass i like to keep some roughness into my, my materials especially this one okay so now let's work with node something i will um, invite you to do is go to preference and within the add-on click on node wrangler and have node wrangler on for what it's worth and for those who are not familiar with blender blender come with a ton of plugins that are not installed by default to make sure the uh, app stays lightweight but you can enable them as you go and there's a really good stuff in there Control and T that will create a series of nodes uh, using a texture mapping and coordinate I do not want to use image texture for that I want to use a color ramp so I'm going to use shift A S for search and color ramp color ramp is one of those nodes that you will use in and out like almost every day multiple times a day a thousand times a day i'm going to plug the vector into the factor the color to the base color and the color to the subsurface um, color here i'm going to turn down the transmission a little bit i'm going to reintroduce a little bit of sur surface scattering here there's basically two ways to use color ramp usually you will use them to um, narrow or expand the range of the black and the white or introduce gradients and new colors i'm gonna pick two colors that you know i know are kind of safe and baseline pretty good and then i'm gonna start playing with uh, all of the other parameters here uh, balancing the subsurface the transmission and i'm gonna introduce a math node i'm gonna slide that in between the color and the um, principal bsdf and i'm going to start playing with that value you can see right off the bat i can add more or less and i'm going to add basically a value um, that will supplement the gradient i'm going to tweak all of those things but it's going to be quite boring and time consuming so i'm going to speed up the video and uh, we'll see each other when i land somewhere that i'm happy with interesting so there's a few things that i'm happy with and a few things that i'm definitely not happy with one of the things that i'm happy with are those highlights i think it's catching the light quite nice i like the materials i think we're really close i don't like the rotation here i think there's a little bit too much motion and rotation which make these like weird um intricate and like how intricate are those like objects between each other so i'm gonna turn that down a little bit the other thing that i'm noticing here is the seam here that is repeating so i believe this is because of the uv mapping and we're going to tweak that right now so first i'm going to type a to select all of my faces i'm going to type u to unwrap and there's different way to unwrap for now i'm just going to hit cube projection so now i can tell the grid how the grid is affecting my mesh my object and where the seam is okay. i'm not happy with that seam i want to make sure i have my uh, face selection 
selected or you can type three in your keyboard and I want to select my border. In order to do that, I'm going to type Alt and click one of those edges. I'm going to go into my UV view. I'm going to type A to select everything and moving left and right or up and down will affect how my uh, texture is mapped onto my object. And I'm going to move that on the U until I don't see my seam anymore. And you can see on the preview on the left, uh, I do not see my seam anymore and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to release. So in the node editor, I'm going to click back on the principal BSDF. So control shift and uh, left click here. So I have my material previewed. I'm quite happy with that. You can see some seam here, but that's due to the light reflecting on those edges. At this point, you pretty much have all what you want. So what I suggest you doing is save this file, save as and create a new file. There's other way to incrementally save, but let's do it this way. And now what you can do is start tweaking without fearing to lose your previous progress. So if you want to change some colors and do and try something completely different, now is the time and you can tweak things until you find a place that you are happy with. I'm going to create a few versions of it with different color scheme and different uh, kind of materials. So I can stick, take a step back and look at the one that I prefer. So I'm going to take a few minutes to create a few variations to show you like how wide and how um, big the, the, the breadth of the explorations can be. Um, and then we'll go back for the conclusion. Now I just want to show you the breadth uh, uh, and how you can iterate on things and how much results will be different. Well, thank you very much for following along. I hope uh, you learned some things. It was quite a very simple an introduction to the series I will be putting out there very soon. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you learned a thing or two during this video. Uh, please give it a like, subscribe, leave it a comment turn on the notification bell on uh, because more are coming your way very soon. Thank you so much.